What's up guys? Joey here of Yugatech and Samsung has just released the Galaxy S10 series of flagship smartphones and this is gonna be our hands-on review of the Galaxy S10e. So it's a toned-down version of the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus with some corners cut. You could say it's kind of like what the iPhone XR was to the XS and XS Max from Apple's lineup last year. This also marks the first time Samsung is introducing a third, cheaper, more toned-down variant to the Galaxy S series. And obviously that means it's a big step for the company. It can drive more consumers to take the plunge, but that also brings some risks, especially if the phone is not good. But I guess that's what we have to talk about today. So to start things off, let's talk about design. By the way, we have the prism black color here, but only the prism white variant will be coming to the Philippines. So anyway, I guess with the S10 series, the most prominent design feature is the hole punch in the corner of the screen that makes room for the selfie camera. So the hole punch is essentially yet another solution that companies have taken to solve the bezel problem. We've seen notches of different sizes, we've seen camera slider phones, we've seen double screen phones, and of course, like this one, holes in the screen. I first experienced it with the Huawei Nova 4 and honestly, it's a lot less of an eyesore compared to a notch. And unlike the Nova 4, with the S10e, we're getting an amazing AMOLED screen, which if you factor in the fact that Samsung was able to punch a hole in it, is a technical achievement within itself. But of course, if you're not a fan of the hole, there is an option in the settings to hide it. One thing that the S10e screen doesn't have though, is the fancy new under-display ultrasonic fingerprint scanner that's on the S10 and S10 Plus. Instead, it has a traditional fingerprint scanner integrated into the power button on the right side. Personally, I'm a much bigger fan of rear-mounted sensors, but considering that the S10e isn't as big of a phone as the S10 and S10 Plus at just 5.8 inches, it's not too hard to reach the power button to unlock the phone. Another cut corner for the S10e is that the edges of the display are not curved. You definitely notice it, especially when holding all three phones one after the other. But then again, I guess you could say it's more of a design change in terms of aesthetics and ergonomics, but functionally, we're still getting the same good display. Now, rounding off the rest of the design is, of course, as expected from a Samsung flagship, very premium and classy look. It's a sandwich of glass and aluminum that covers both form and function. For the latter, we still do have a 3.5mm headphone jack. Good job for still keeping that, Samsung. It's positioned on the bottom beside the Type-C port, which I know a lot of people like. Up top, we have a hybrid SIM tray, which is fair. A dedicated microSD card slot would have been nice, of course, but seeing as we already get 128GB of internal storage, and you can expand a lot with a 512GB card, I can let it slide. On the left, volume controls and the infamous Bixby button. Unfortunately, One UI does not allow native remapping of the Bixby button, which I really hope becomes a native feature in the future, especially if Samsung decides to keep the Bixby button forever. I hope they don't. Though, I will say, all the buttons feel really nice to press, Though I wish the power button wasn't as recessed as it is and positioned a little bit lower, especially since it's also a fingerprint scanner. And of course, at the back, we get the horizontally organized rear cameras upon a full sheet of glass that curves very nicely towards the edges. And also gives us our surprisingly two-way wireless charging which we'll talk about more later on. Now holding the phone in the hands honestly feels great. It's one of the nicest looking phones I've seen. It's tough with an IP68 rating, but the size is what I like the most. Despite being a bigger guy myself, ironically, I actually like the smaller versions of phones, like how I've always personally opted for the standard non-XL versions of the Pixel 2 and Pixel 3 for my daily drivers over the past couple of years. Actually, when I initially got the S10e in my hands, the very first thing I did was compare it to the size of my Pixel and immediately I got really excited because they have almost the same exact dimensions. Physical dimensions, that is. Okay, this is gonna be a mouthful. But we get a 5.8 inch dynamic AMOLED Infinity O display. The O, of course, refers to the cutout for the front camera. It's got a resolution of 2280 by 1080, which does mean that this is now a 19 by 9 aspect ratio compared to the previous 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio from the S8 and S9. Samsung has a really good track record when it comes to displays, especially with their flagship smartphones, and the S10e definitely does not break the mold. It has a gorgeous screen with some of the best colors I've seen on a smartphone. It's an AMOLED display, so blacks are really deep, and even out in the sun, you don't have to max out the brightness since it can go all the way up to 800 freaking nits. Seriously, even in a brightly lit room, it almost hurts to look at when you're at 100%. You probably 
won't ever go maximum brightness unless it's really that bright in the environment. So you know how the S10e is kind of like the iPhone 10R of the series? Well, one of the corners that the 10R cut compared to the 10S's was the display. It used a lower resolution IPS display, which is one thing some people hate about that phone. So with that in mind, Samsung actually did pretty great here with regards to the S10e's display. Yeah, it's smaller, it has a lower full HD plus resolution, and the edges aren't curved, but it's still an AMOLED Infinity O screen, it's still got HDR10+, plus. it's still great. Yes, corners were cut, but it was thoughtfully done. Now moving on to the speakers. Man, am I impressed. First of all, it's loud. Both the downfiring loudspeaker and the call speaker are utilized for a stereo setup. It's clean, you get separation between the lows, mids, and highs. The soundstage is great, but the best thing about it is the built-in Dolby Atmos setting. It really sucks that I can't let you guys hear an accurate representation of the difference it makes, but man, it really feels like there are a lot more speakers than there actually are. It really throws the sound at you, similar to what you would hear in a movie theater. shift gears a little bit and discuss the cameras. So unlike the S10 and S10 Plus, the S10e does not have the telephoto camera at the back, but we still get the 12 megapixel dual aperture lens from last year's Galaxy S9 and also a 16 megapixel ultra wide lens. Now with regards to the lack of the telephoto lens, I don't think we're losing much. Samsung has done really well in the past when it comes to camera zoom, but I honestly don't see myself using the telephoto lens as much as the ultra wide lens, which is why I'm glad it stayed on the S10e. Next, live focus, of course, makes a comeback, but now with more features. Aside from just the standard background blur, it can be a radial blur or spin, a linear blur or zoom, and color point, which makes the background black and white while your subject stays in full color. Super slow motion at 960 FPS is back, However, there's now an option to capture 0.8 seconds, but at the sacrifice of some quality. Compared to the regular 0.4 second shot, for photos, quality is great as expected. Again, I don't really see the use of the pro mode and the variable aperture because the automatic mode is already really good at what it does. Shots are sharp, dynamic range is impressive, colors are vibrant, and honestly, I never found myself wanting to have a telephoto camera. For the selfie camera, I can't complain either. Skin tones are nice and natural, we're also able to get a pretty good live focus shots despite not having a secondary lens. And yeah, AR emoji is back if you're into that sort of thing. I've never been a big fan but you know, whatever floats your boat. Alright, now let's talk more hardware. So powering the S10e is, depending on your region, either a Snapdragon 855 or Exynos 9820. Also 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. We weren't able to get any benchmark results unfortunately due to our limited time with the devices, but we can definitely expect performance to be great. I don't expect it to perform much less than the S10 and S10 Plus, even if it has less RAM, which is of course a good thing. So in terms of performance, basically you're not really losing out on a lot if you decide to go for the S10e instead of the S10 or S10 Plus. So for battery, this is another thing that's been cut down for the S10e compared to its bigger brothers. So it's got a 3,100 milliamp hour battery, which actually isn't a huge drop from the S10 Plus's 3,400 milliamp hours. However, consider that the S10e has a smaller, lower resolution display and less components overall, which can work in favor of it when it comes to battery life. And it's great that we also don't lose out on wireless power share and fast charging 2.0. The former is great, especially if you have wearables that support wireless charging, but not so much for wireless charging on their phone as it's quite slow. And as for fast wireless charging, it's probably still not enough to convince people to move towards a fully wireless lifestyle. Charging with the appropriate cord is still a lot faster. So by now we've taken a look at pretty much all of the hardware on the S10e. Now let's finish strong. Let's talk about the software experience. So if there's one thing that's exactly the same across all phones in the series, it's that all of them run one UI based on Android Pie. The UI itself, I'm personally not too sure. I know, this is very subjective, I know. 
but I really like the default icons from the old Samsung experience rather than these ones, but I guess you get used to it. So now let's talk about the other biometric security feature, which is of course face recognition. So over the course of my time with the S10e, I actually ended up preferring the face recognition over using the fingerprint scanner. It works really well, whether I'm wearing my glasses or not, and it's really good about making sure you're actually looking at the phone for it to unlock, which is clearly the safe route when it comes to this sort of thing. I think One UI is overall a better Android skin compared to Samsung Experience and definitely TouchWiz. And I'm willing to get used to the new look. One thing I do still really do hope for in the future is for native remapping of that darn Bixby button. Do it, Samsung. Do it. Okay, so this is a big thing for me to say, but as your stereotypical lover of stock Android and all things Google, if... Samsung software would include options in the future for native Bixby button remapping and some other minor things. And also if they could up the game on their camera software, I would maybe, maybe consider dropping my Pixel for a Samsung phone, but I guess not yet. Also, I'll just go ahead and say something really important so that this video does not give you the wrong idea. The Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus are much better phones than the S10e. Again, the S10 and S10 Plus are much better phones than the S10e. That is a fact. They have better design and pack more features. And if you want the current best phone that Samsung has to offer, then these are the ones that you should go for. But wait, wait, let's say you're like me. If you can live with the slightly smaller display with less screen resolution, if you can live with 2GB less RAM. If you can live without the telephoto lens, without the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. If you're okay with a smaller battery. Actually, no, not if you can live without. More like if you don't care about these features. Then, the Galaxy S10e is actually the one you should go for among the three. Going back to the analogy we had earlier, the Samsung Galaxy S10e is a great example of what Apple should have done with the iPhone XR. It still manages to pack a lot of features while cutting the right corners, despite being the cheapest in the Galaxy S10 series. You can check out the price of the S10e, as well as the S10 and S10 Plus down in the description box. Also, be sure to check out our hands-on review of the S10 and S10 Plus if you haven't already. Click over here to watch that. So yeah, this is it, guys. What do you think about the Samsung Galaxy S10e? Are you gonna opt for it instead of the S10 or S10 Plus? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give us a like. Subscribe to our channel for more content. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. And be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been Joey and I'll see you guys in the next one.